Hey, what's up guys? Nozilla here. This is a non-GTR video update. I figured I would just do something a little bit different. Um, still waiting on some parts for the GTR and stuff before I can get it to a point where I think a, a video is going to be uh, worthwhile. Uh, so I figured uh, I would do a quick little uh, demonstration today. Um, I picked up a new toy. Um, this is just a little airflow meter that I picked up off Amazon. And I did this out of uh, curiosity, um, basically because my car, since it's been built, um, it's been having some uh, temperature issues, cre temperature creeping issues, uh, only at idle. Uh, when the car is running, driving under load, heavy use, absolutely no problem cooling. Uh, it always stays at about a constant, let's say 185 to 190 max, um, you know, Fahrenheit. And uh, I've always kind of suspected there might be a few weak links in my cooling system. Uh, there's definitely some better choices I could have made and we might end up, you know, moving along and, and, and taking advantage of some better options. But for right now, I'm really just trying to troubleshoot what the problem is. And I've been through quite a bit with this, you know, initially I, I thought this was like a, a bleeding issue with the coolant system. Uh, I am using like Evan's uh, ethylene uh, glycol coolant and I know that that does typically run a little bit hotter, uh, but still... Um, the creeping issue, like it'll hit, you know, it'll, it'll hit operating temperature. Like I said, is about like 185 to 190 or whatever when I'm driving. If I stop the car, or even if I'm just kind of rolling around, um, you know, below 1500, you know, 2000 RPM or whatever, temps will start to creep up. And um, it seems as though that, I mean, I don't, I don't want to let it go. Obviously, I'll shut off, shut off the car when it hits a certain temperature. But it seems like it would just keep going. So. I don't know if I have a flow issue uh, or if I have like a, just a coolant issue as far as like not being able to cool down the coolant as it goes to the radiator. At first I suspected it was a flow issue. Uh, I went as far as to put an actual, um, you know, overdrive pulley on the, uh, the water pump and to see if I could, you know, speed that up a little bit and see if that makes a difference. Uh, you know, the difference was kind of marginal, not really, not really too crazy. Because I know that the uh, the balance that I'm running is it does underdrive the water pump, so my idea was then maybe that was creating the problem. So I'll overdrive um, the water pulley, and then maybe I can get back to like the normal uh, ratio between the gears. But again, that didn't seem to make a difference. Um, one of the next steps that I did with the car was <clears throat> I added. Um, these lines up here to the ports on the, uh, the water jackets on the intake manifold. Uh, so I have like, you know, an 8N to, um, I'm sorry, a quarter MPT to um, uh, four N fittings coming out of each of the water jackets on the manifold. And then I ran a line coming through here, uh, which then basically vents to the radiator cap area here, you know, above where the flow would be. Um, this is kind of like considered, I guess, like more or less like a self bleeding type of thing. So if any air gets trapped in those lines going to those jackets, uh, the air bubbles have a, a chance to escape and work their way out. Um, and then they would vent through the expansion tank. Um, so I did that, uh, rebled the system and everything like that. Again, this was like last year. Um, again, didn't, didn't seem to make that much of a difference. Uh, so really I think I'm down to either the lack of flow or not enough cooling capacity. So to the radiator, I have a, uh, this is a Chase Bays uh, tucked radiator uh, for S and R chassis. Now I got another one right here. This is what it looks like. <clears throat> this is a relatively thick unit. You can see very thick. Um, it has these kind of like built in, you know, fan uh, mounts on it. And it's got, you know, 20 in orb fittings, uh, you know, on each side. And this is a true dual pass radiator. You can see there's an upper tank and there's a lower tank. So your coolant is going to enter up here. It's going to come down here. It's going to drop. It's going to come over and then it's going to exit. So, um, Chase Bays states on their website that um, this radiator does not need any shrouding. Uh, in fact, they used to make they used to make this radiator with a shroud attached. 
uh, and now this is the newer version of it, make, making a claim that the shroud is no longer needed. In fact, it restricts airflow at speed. So I'm not sure really whether or not I agree with that statement, um, but certainly uh, this seems to be an issue with cooling. So I was thinking to myself, okay, shrouding is absolutely, I mean, it's always necessary on any kind of, you know, a cooling system. Uh, so that's kind of a no brainer. So I've been running this thing without a shroud and obviously there's no problems, uh, you know, when you're at operating temperature, when you're, when the car is rolling above a certain RPM, but at idle, that's the problem. So shrouding would certainly help with that scenario because it would force the air through the radiator rather than escaping out the sides here. So like, if you can imagine the fan would be mounted here, and this is all open space now where air could just kind of escape. So it could get pulled through here and through the fan versus getting pulled through the actual helmet. And you know, air always takes the path of least resistance. So there seems to be a lot of area, you know, obviously for air to get in here um, to suck through the fans without bypassing the radiator. And then you got this big open spot, this big open spot, this big open spot, more so this whole open area right in here. So, I ordered a shroud. I'm going to weld it onto that spare radiator. I'm gonna mount these same fans up to it and we're going to do a back-to-back -back and see if it makes any difference. Now, that being said, back to my new toy that I just bought, so this airflow meter. Uh, I bought this because, um, obviously, I'm not a big fan of Vishimoto products. If anybody knows me or um, I'm sure you've seen statements that I've made on you know Facebook or whatever, um, I've had some issues with their products. Uh, a lot of people haven't. A lot of people say that they're great. Again, this comes down to uh, cheaper China-made products and quality control. So it's a hit or miss situation. So yes, they look attractive. They have nice packaging. They seem to be a nice company. They do a lot of sponsorships and stuff. Their products do look nice on the, on the outside and appearance, but whether or not that product is actually going to be functionally efficient is another story. Now, uh, you know, Joe Smith over here might order one and it might last him, you know, 10 years with absolutely no problems whatsoever, perfectly 100% efficient. And then Joe Schmo over here might order one and it's just a complete dud and won't cool and he's overheating all the place. Uh, so it's just one of those quality control things that I try to avoid generally. And now this is the only Mishimoto part of my car. And again, uh, you know, so the only Mishimoto part in the car, I guess you say, is the fans. So the fans came with the Chase Bay radiator. Uh, you had an option of doing the slimline fans, which I believe, if I recall correctly, were rated at somewhere around like like a thousand CFM or maybe slightly below a thousand, and then doing like the Raceline fans, which were the heavy duty Mishimoto fans, and they were rated at like I think seventeen or eighteen hundred CFM each. So. Um, I kind of question that claim about the CFM rating. And I know that there's uh, a lot of speculation on the internet and people have done some testing about Mishimoto fans and seeing if those numbers that they claim are actually legitimate. So that's where my little toy comes into place here. So I am going to uh, start the car up, turn the fans on, and I'm gonna do a quick measure and see what we get. So hopefully this thing is still hot. And we got fans. It sounds like the fans are on. And it just stalled. Oh, the fans are on anyway, so we're going to run it. All right, so we're on feet per minute. Turn the light on. All right, so there you have it. Um, now I did this test uh, a little bit before I made this video as well. 
and I was getting anywhere between like 1280 to like 1320. So that time we saw it peak a little bit over 1400. Uh, so we're still looking at being close to, you know, three to 400 CFM per fan off what the advertised rating is. Um, now, mind you, I mean, I have a, a more than capable uh, electrical system in the car. Um, so I know it's not like an electrical issue uh, or, you know, anything's uh, not getting what it needs. So I think the first step is going to duck these guys up, uh, shroud these guys up rather, and, and see what difference that makes. And I, I suspect that will make a, a gigantic difference. Um, regardless, there were 13, 1400 CFM times two, you know, we were talking, you know, almost 3000 CFM. So that's quite a bit of movement in there. Uh, so I think that should be more than enough to cool the radiator down. However, still a little bit disappointing that they claim to be, you know, 17, 1800 CFM and they're uh, nowhere close to that. So I know that there's some, you know, SPAL fans out there and some also some other, you know, real name brand fans that are probably around the same size or a little bit smaller than these that claim um, about, you know, the similar airflow. So I would imagine like they're, they're larger fans. Like I've seen some up as high as, high as like 21, 2200 CFM, you know, per fan or whatever. Now these are 12 inches uh, duals. And you can see again, as I was talking before, like all the open area here. And this is what Chase Base claims to allow airflow to pass through and not overheat on the highway. However, that just creates the opposite effect and you overheat on the idle. So... <clears throat> Again, I'm not going to be bashing anybody. I'm not bashing Mishimoto. I'm not bashing Chase Bays. Uh, I'm doing some testing for myself because I have these issues. And it may turn out that my issue has absolutely nothing to do with the radiator setup, nothing to do with the fan setup. Uh, it could have to be, it could have to be do with like the water pump or something. I have no idea yet because I haven't taken it off. So I have that shroud coming in. I'm going to install that. We'll re-bleed the coolant system, we'll hook it up, and we will do a follow-up video, and uh, we will see what happens. And then if that doesn't fix the problem, then I'm pretty much going to be 1,000% certain that I have a flow issue. Now, the flow issue could be a pump that's not performing. Um, it could have to do with the pulley sizing, possibly. Uh, or there could be some kind of restriction that's in the system uh, that was, you know, that maybe took place during the engine build uh, that I'm not aware of. Um, so then it would obviously uh, require me to take down, you know, the front portion of the engine and open up the water pump and take a look. So I am going to uh, leave it at that and we'll follow up uh, maybe in about, you know, a few weeks or so and uh, we'll have some factual data and we'll go from there. All right, guys, hope this was helpful.